Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, obviously not posted for a little bit, been busy with work. Been busy building tables and getting them out for certain businesses and stuff like that. Uh, but I've got a free, I've got a free week this week, so I might get a few videos out, make some stuff uh, and go from there. But basically this one is to cover a lot of the questions I get on my DNC and my CNC plasma. Now, I may, I've been making these for quite, well, it quite a while. I mean, I made a few since, but this one was pretty much my third one. Um, and I kind of ironed everything out. So the accuracy on this one is, is just far superior than what I can buy, maybe under 10K, something like that. And it cost me about 800 quid. And there's just another chance I would give it away. Now, I get loads and loads of questions about Torch Art Control. It doesn't look like I'd use it and va va va, this, that and the other. So I'll give you a bit of a rundown. Yes, I used to use high cut torch eye control, and no, I don't anymore, uh, because for what I cut, it's better without it. And then I cut mainly detailed football badges, um, stuff like that, like that sheet of steel that you see on there is 500 by 500 mil. So this table's, I think it's cutting area is pretty much about a metre by a metre, which for, for me is ample. I mean, you can see the size of this little, you won't believe what I cram in here. Yeah, every little floor space is, especially when I'm building the bigger tables and they take up all this room. So that's as big as, as I want to go. Um, my hypertherm, obviously I upgraded from the Jassy to the hypertherm, so thickness un unlimited really for, for what I want to achieve. But on the touch eye control, a little bit of the problem that... Before you read the forums, because I know that everyone just swears by touch eye control and blah, 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 and sometimes it's worth, without becoming a sheep, and just following everybody is try it now what i did is i did a lot of the trials i put the, i bought the steel arm um run through steel and steel for cuff to get absolutely accurate so if i want a 10.2 mil cut this gives me a 10.2 mil cut provided it's with a new tip once i've cut about 20 shapes that cuff gets a little bit wider it's all stuff that you need to take into consideration so if i'm selling something that's mega detailed that has to be 10 point maybe 10.2 10.3 then I have to put a new tip on and we'll get away with one that's a week. If it's a general shape, like a garden ornament, it don't really matter. Yeah, because if it's if it's a mill out, the customer's not gonna not gonna know. Now, as you guys know touch, what torch eye control does, yeah, it keeps the torch at that given height. Um, however, there's, there's plus and minuses. What I found it was doing is on the really, really detailed cut, like I was cutting some like two mil squares out. That's that. I mean, that's pretty small because I've had people come around and have a look, and I've shown them quite a two mil square. Now their machine at fifteen k doesn't do that um, because what it was doing is because on, obviously on sheet cam you set it as a certain percentage. So for, obviously for tight corners, sixty percent, thirty percent, whatever you whatever you want to do. With all the small shapes, because of touch eye control, is you have to kind of turn it off because if you leave it on and slow it down, the voltage current increases. Um, the, then it's there's, there's kind of more it it, it it kind of backs away from the cut. It's not smooth. Your corners more rounded, and sometimes it's wider on the corners. I was getting stuff like that all the time, and not just me. Everyone that I spoke to went, "Oh no, you can't cut that small." We're, we're one of them. Well, I wanted to. That was the whole point of building one. So I found out that I had to go to a floating head and leave touch eye control, and it works. For me, for what I cut, I'm not saying they don't work, but for me, for what I cut is great. Now, if you want to check out my Instagram and see actually what I cut, you'll be quite surprised how accurate the thing is with it. So today's video, and I keep getting asked, is how do I set my floating head up and what does that do? Well, basically for me, the old, I think the, the most critical part is pierce. Uh, is pierce delay and pierce height. Now, when you look at, obviously, the signs again that I've cut, I've not, uh, in fact, actually, yeah, one sec, and I'll show you, actually. That gives you an example. Now, if you look at my inside cuts there, yeah, there's no divot at all. Yeah, now, when you look at most, there is a divot. You cannot see where my torch has stopped and started. Now, it's easy to people go, oh, I'll compensate that and use a 5 mil lead out. Well, that, that's all good, so obviously this heart shape, maybe I could do that, but when you're looking at the little E, yeah, and the little screw holes, it's not five mil, the hole's not five mil, so I can't use a five mil hole. So when, again, once you start looking at the football signs, I do some of the lettering, 
it's that tiny it is impossible to get a small lead in that's where your pierce height comes in and if that's correct yeah I can actually get away with no with basically no delay no pierce delay um, sometimes I might use a bit of an overcut but that's with a floating head so basically all as you want to be doing is making sure that every, sing every single letter every single cut pierces is at the same height so even if your steel is slight, slightly warped about a mil it doesn't matter because it's going to pierce at that height now with this being a hypertherm between 1.5 1.7 i know i pretty much get away with it so even if it comes off even if it's the top of the arc it doesn't make no difference for cut quality i get i get away with it so this video is a quickly if you're using sheet cam uh how to how i quickly set my torch eye control up so what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, flick everything off back onto sheet cam. I'm going to show you how, how, the, qu the quick way that I do it. And I don't measure it. You're best off is shim it. So I know for most of my cuts, it's 1.6 mil. Right. That piece there is a 1.6 mil piece of steel. So shim it. Yeah. Don't measure it. Uh, and by the time I finish, that will just slide underneath. And it will be perfect every single time. So I'll just uh, flick around to this note before you all start jumping out the seat going Mac 3 it's too old it suits Mac 3 is fine for me um, if I want a 10.2 mil old cut this cuts a 10.2 mil old so unless it does that I can't see the point of getting rid yeah let's save a bit of money if I have to upgrade later on I, I might change but I'm used to it work I'm used to this how it works um, so we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that but you use whatever software you use however mac 3 only drives my table mac 3 is nothing to do with for me um your ps height that's set in your sheet cam or whichever yeah post processor you're using so mac 3 really is it's an irrelevant the only thing that mac 3 does or, or your you know what i mean your controller does is when you go on diagnostics now if i look at my switch what you've got to make sure it does is if you push it up you'll see it lights up because my switch is basically all, is always open so when I move the switch closes it which will stop the head so that's the only thing on your given software that's what you've just got to make sure your touch does before anything if it doesn't do that when you're testing the the Z will just drive straight through the bottom of the table it's got to stop it um, so that's the only thing that you need to do, which that will that will be done by your control board and whether your output output pins. If you're struggling with wiring, yeah, by all means ask me. I'll make a quick video, but I, I'm assuming the guys watching this has already run CNC, know a little bit about it, but maybe want the touch, the floating head, or whether they're, whether they're a static head. Yeah, because they, they work and whether they want to convert to a floating head, because that's that's the bare minimum. I would never use a, a static one, but by all means, you know what I mean, upgrade to a floating one. So, hope, you know what I mean, I doubt whether any beginners will be, you know what I mean, watching this, to be fair. So, that's your first thing. So, your second one is, obviously, I use sheet cam. Now, everything, I have the tools in place, so what I suggest you do is just go, draw a quick shape, any shape, I use SVG, you want to use DXF if you wish. I don't use DXF. There's a video that I do explaining why I don't use DXF because they're not as smooth as SVG, uh, especially when you're doing small detail stuff, but that's for another day. So I've already imported a square, a 50 mil square. This is just a test one because every setting you're going to make, you're going to have to create a new thing, which I'm going to go through in a second. So the settings that you want in Cheat Cam, which I know, is if you go to options machine you click on post processor I'll try and zoom in here um, and then obviously that's what I use my post processor but if we, if we click edit we look and you want off the center offset saw we keep going down it's usually about 30 lines down let me have a look there we go that is the only setting that you need to adjust switch offset value now my set is 7.5 my set is 7.5 uh don't know why that should give me too high of a cut don't forget your cut height when you look in sheet cam example if we look in here right your cut height is set example to that so you see some of my good settings actually for ps delay there so if you want to copy them you can have that you can have a freebie on that one um but basically 
PSI, that's what pretty much I'm right now. Again, you can pretty much vary actually because because PSI should be generally I, I should d double obviously the cut height, but I'll be honest with you, sometimes it's worth playing with that because on such a such small steel, you can actually get away with a PSI the same as the cut height one point six. But again, try it. Yeah, this kind of works for me trying and test it, but that's what I've been messing around with, um, obviously to to get rid of the um, to divot. I'll, again, this is just a, a, a general. I'll adjust that per layer depending on what size I'm cutting. So obviously you can you can copy it down if you wish, but I actually change it. So basically that obviously sets your height. So as we went into the options before, uh, it's seven point five. So if we just if I just quickly, I've got the square already done. So if I quickly make it outside offset, cut there. Yeah, create pulse processor, which is in the top there. Click save on that. And we're where we got. We've created that. So we minimise that and we jump in we jump into Mac 3. Now then. What I'll do then, I'll move my torch where I want to move it. Yeah, ignore those for now. It doesn't matter. We just we just want to know how I it's cutting. So click on reset. Obviously, as you know, guys, you guys know me. I use an Xbox controller for my machine. So what we'll do is we'll just bring my machine across here. Now, in order for my torch, I won't do it manually. What I'll do. I say ignore these, is hit reference to home. Now, once you hit that, the torch head will go down on its own. So if you have a look, it's stopped bang on the steel. Now, again, doesn't matter what them are, because we're going to zero them out anyway. So, we're zeroed. Now, what we need to do now is turn the plasma cutter off, because we're not cutting anything, and we'll insert, we'll insert that file. So, we'll load square tap. I'm in there, so we'll we'll start the cut now. As soon as it pierces, and it starts to cut, we'll stop the machine. So I'll just put it over here while we start it, and then we'll sh we'll show you what I mean. So it goes over, hits it, comes down, goes up, and it's cutting. We stop it. Now at that point, like we said before, it's a 1.6 cut height. Yeah, so we're working out the difference between this and the switch. So if I get my shim. Oh, that's not 1.6. Can you see? My, it's nearly, it's, it, it's nearly double, right? So we don't have to. Other than that setting in cheat cam, we don't need to adjust anything, yeah, because obviously the the machine is obviously preset. The distance, obviously, from the ball screw going up, is the right millimeters. Obviously, you've got to get that right. So if you want it to travel 10 mil, it's got to go 10 mil. Obviously, all your basics has has, has got to be right. This is just literally the distance between the switch it's seeing and the steel. So what we do, what we need to do, is we'll put that back to where it was before. We'll just click on this reset here. Put back on it. Now we won't, we won't drop the head yet. Now obviously we'll close the G code. We don't need that again. It doesn't matter about them. So we go back onto our sheet cam, I did before. Now on this number, now I know that this mine is 5.7. That should give me absolutely perfect. So we'll be five. But again, you can, you can if you want it lower, you lower the number. Want it higher, you higher the number. You can spend time with it if you want, put 5.75, put whatever. The, the, this for me, it matters. And I, and I definitely know between 5.7 and 5.9, yeah, it makes it, it does make a difference. Uh, so we'll put 5.7 there, so we'll save it. So back in back into my square. So we'll just delete my operation there. Because we, and then we'll create another one because we have to create one because we've just changed our G code. Yeah, so we'll make another one there. Hit the post processor. Save on that one. We'll replace the old one. And then we're done. So now this height is now set at 5.7. So we go back on the sheet cam. And again, like we said before, I'll just reference home until it clicks. There we go, it's clicked. So if you take notice now, you can start seeing the figures. 
So now it's clicked, you see, but it's recognized, it's recognized my number 7.5, that's when before we changed it. So when we change it this time to 5.7, when we revert it to zero next time, that will say then 5.7. Uh, so we're not actually changing it in in Mac through changing it in cheat cam, but you you can see the uh, the resemblance. So we'll zero that out. We will then load the same square, and then we'll start it again. So we're back on that. So we we'll start that. Click down. Come on, and then we'll stop it. So now we measure that, and that pretty much is is bang on the money because I know because I know it's five I know it's five point seven. So that is a one point five mil sheet, and that is bang on the money.